The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the millions of Americans covered by Social Security? If so, you will be vitally interested in tonight's commercial message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. The subject is how to build social security into full security. Interested? Then please listen carefully in about 12 minutes to this important message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight... The subject of our FBI file, Jailbreak. It's titled, The Unwilling Host. The latest issue of the Uniform Crime Survey, issued by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, unfortunately shows an increase in the number of crimes an increase large enough in certain respects to call one important fact to your attention. All the law enforcement agencies in the world cannot cope successfully with criminals at the rate society is now producing them. However, progress can be made, must be made. Too many crimes reported in the current survey were committed by those 30 years of age and under. And a study of their previous records revealed a large proportion with a background of crime, a background of juvenile delinquency. The responsibility for these men and women rests in most cases in the homes from which they came, homes where the parents were too busy, where parental guidance was evaded or never even thought about. If you are a parent or a childless but decent citizen, look about your community help improve the moral outlook and character of your younger neighbors. The work you do will pay off, will be rewarded in less crime, and thus in greater safety for you. Tonight's FBI file opens on a busy street in a large Midwestern city. A young man walks along the row of stores looking at each window for a name. Near the corner, he comes to a record shop, pauses in front, and enters. Can I help you? Is this Jimmy Warren's place? Uh-huh. I'd like to see him. I'm an old friend. He's sleeping. Oh. Well, uh, if you tell me where he lives, I'll go over We live in back. We? I'm his wife. Oh. Oh, well, then would you uh, please go back and wake him? Did you want some records? I want to see Jimmy. Oh, pardon me. I guess the door's stuck. Again. Wait, it isn't stuck. I locked it. What for? I wanted some privacy. Annie, I think you ought to go up. Roy. Hello, Jimmy. Good to see you again. When did you get out? Day before yesterday. Better turn that thing off. Oh. Jimmy, who is this? He was in jail with me. Roy, I thought you were in for good. I didn't leave with the warden's best wishes. You busted out? Yeah, that was the general idea. Why'd you come here? To see you. Well, if you want money... No. Or... What do you want? I'd like to stay here for a while. Roy, we got three small rooms in back. It's hardly enough for us. Let him stay. What? He can use the storeroom. Take him back there. The following day at the local Red Cross blood bank, 
FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is drinking a cup of coffee after having made his donation when Police Detective Dick Hopkins comes into the small anteroom. Oh, hi, Dick. Oh, hello, Jim. This cot empty? Yeah. Uh, How about a little coffee? Swell. I'll get it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, running into you saves me a trip to your office. Oh, what would you want there? We might be on a case together. Hmm? The railroad police found a freight car in the yards this morning with a man's body. His outer garments had been removed, and in the corner of the car they found a prison uniform. It turned out to belong to somebody named Roy Carter. Roy Carter. Yeah, he escaped two days ago from Chardon. Hmm. How would the FBI get in on it? I think you had a detainer on him. What for? Bank robbery. Local? No, he's never worked this part of the state, so far as we know. Hmm. Maybe you're just passing through. I don't think so. Why not, Dick? One of the prisoners at Sheridan told the warden that Carter intended visiting an ex-inmate who lived here. Any idea who that was? No. But, um, wait a minute. This, uh... A torn piece of paper was found in the boxcar. It says Market Street. Mm-hmm. No address? No. Probably on the other half. We looked for that, no trace of it. Well, I'll get a copy of Carter's writing, have the lab check to see if he wrote this. Fine. Oh, have you been in touch with the prison? I wired him as soon as we identified the uniform. I asked the warden to send along a list of prisoners from this area who'd been released since Carter got to Sheridan. Good. I'll find out about that detainer as soon as I get back to the office. Morning, Mrs. Warren. What are you doing out here? I got bored sitting back there alone. Suppose somebody sees you. I don't think I'm a customer. You're still taking a chance. I like to take chances. What's in the container? Coffee. Want some? Yeah. I'll get your cup. Where's Jimmy? He went out. You sure don't like the idea of my being here much. Want sugar? No. Just black. Here. Thanks. It's a good coffee. Jimmy always says it's too strong. I got an idea that a lot of things is too strong for Jimmy. How'd you two ever get together? I met him right after he got out. And put him on the straight and narrow? I had nothing to do with it. Oh, and what's with his store? An uncle died and left it to him. Did you have to keep it? He wanted to keep it. How about you? I do what he says. <laughs> oh, who are you kidding? When I came in here, I found out who was in charge. You want me to tell you what I think? Do you? What? I think you're in this because nothing better came along. That's not true. Then uh, why'd you want me to stay here? Look, I I'll want... tell you why. It's because I happen to be what you're waiting for. Is that right? Getting back. Never mind. It's just Jimmy. Roy, you shouldn't be out here. I asked him out for some coffee. Oh. Well, I got good news for you, Roy. Oh, what? I ran into a friend of mine, Joe Marshall. Got a farm upstate, and I told him about you. He said you could stay with him as long as you want. Well, that's real nice of you, Jimmy. But I don't like farms. You can't keep on here. Cops will nail you, sure. Jimmy, Roy has no money. I know. Well, is he going to be Joe Marshall's guest? He can work up there. That'll pay for his keep. But don't it's you think... It's all arranged, Danny. Joe's driving up to the farm. He'll meet Roy at the corner of Broadway and Main at 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> The essence of any investigation is speed. Immediately upon his return to the FBI field office, Special Agent Taylor checked the files. He also sent the torn slip of paper bearing the words Market Street to the crime laboratory 
where it was checked against a known sample of Roy Carter's handwriting. Wanted notices were run off featuring Carter's picture and fingerprints. Late that same afternoon, the file room called Agent Taylor. Roy Carter was wanted by your FBI. Upon receiving that message and a lab report on the handwriting, Agent Taylor hurried to police headquarters to see Detective Hopkins. Dick, you were right about that detainer. Did you get a report from the lab? Yes, Carter scribbled the words Market Street on that slip of paper. Oh, did you get that list of ex-inmates at Sheridan? Yeah, none of them has a Market Street address. Uh-huh. How many of them are from around here? Approximately 200. Some are in other jails and a few are dead. Then we get a breakdown of that? I'm having one made up now. Good. Oh, pardon me, Detective Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins, I was told to talk to you. Who was this? Never mind that. Are you looking for Roy Carter? Yes. He'll be at the corner of Broadway and Main at 9 o'clock tonight. Hello? Hello? Jim, that was a tip on Carter. He's supposed to be at Broadway and Main at 9 tonight. Ready? It's only 8 o'clock. It'll take you over half an hour to get there. Yeah. Annie come back yet? No. I'd like to say goodbye to her. She'll be here before you go. Hey, tell me about this uh, Joe Marshall. He's a real nice guy. Does he know I'm hot? No. I just told him you weren't feeling good and needed a change. Jimmy? I'm back here. Do I go yet? No. I've been waiting to say goodbye to you. I'm glad you did. It'll save you a trip. What do you mean? I called Joe Marshall's house. Oh, the guy I'm going away with? Yeah. What did you do that for? Just checking up. I talked to his wife. What do you think? He's in California. He can't be. His wife said she talked to him an hour ago in Sacramento. But I just saw him. He's lying, Roy. He probably has the cops there waiting to pick you up. Now, why would I do that? That's a good question. Let's try and figure an answer, huh? Look, Roy, I- I'll go to Broadway and Main with you. If it's a frame, that wouldn't do me much good. It's not a frame. Then suppose I call Marshall's house again. Let Roy talk to his wife. That's a good idea. Look, aren't, aren't you going to take my word for it? No. Annie. Never mind. Well, it was a frame, huh? It was a means of getting you out of here. Oh, that was a sucker move, Jimmy. All I got to do is this. And the frame is off. In just a few moments, we'll get back to tonight's case from the official files of the FBI. But right now, let's consider the question of family security. I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. James Hudson, a couple with a problem that nearly all fathers and mothers have to face up to eventually. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Hudson, I understand you're worried about how your family would get along if something happened to you. Well, that's right, Mr. Keating. Mrs. Hudson would get Social Security, but $112 a month wouldn't go far with three youngsters to bring up. No, it certainly isn't enough to take care of us if Jim passed on. Well, then, how much more do you think you'd need? Oh, I guess it would take quite some time to figure that out. No, Mrs. Hudson. All you need is this fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers, published by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Now, here. Let me show you how this fact-finding chart works. It's been designed by the Equitable Society to help you figure out exactly what income your family would need if your husband died suddenly. Look, it guides you every step of the way with easy-to-understand pictures. Every major item of living expense is included so you can get an answer you can rely on. Jim, we really need this chart. How much does it cost, Mr. Keating? Not a cent. It's free. Your Equitable Society representative will be glad to give you a copy. And after you've filled it in, he'll be glad to show you how easy it is to turn your social security into full security. Full security? Well, that's what we need, but that's expensive. On the contrary. With the big head start you already have from social security, plus whatever insurance you now own, 
you may need only a very small additional amount of insurance to give you full security. So, friends, why not get in touch with your Equitable Society representative soon? Ask him for your free copy of Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Unwilling Host. It is an axiom among law enforcement officers that people get the kind of local police protection they deserve, either good or bad according to the interest they show. That point is of vital importance to your FBI and to you, because no agency, even one functioning as smoothly and efficiently as the Federal Bureau of Investigation, is self-sufficient. Tonight's case is an example of the type of cooperation necessary between officers who represent a city, county, or state, and your FBI. That cooperation can exist in your community only if you have an adequate local police force. And as a citizen, part of your job is to see that such an organization is protecting you. The battlefront against crime is wide. Wide enough to cover every corner of the United States. Wide enough so that a weakness in any part of the line will invite defeat, invite an even greater crime wave in the future. Tonight's FBI file continues in a sedan on the corner of Broadway and Main. Special Agent Jim Taylor and Detective Dick Hopkins are waiting for Roy Carter. Dick, it's 10.30. Yeah. Looks like the tip was bad. I guess so. Shall we move? Okay. Maybe this was somebody's idea of a joke. I doubt it. My feeling is somebody tried to set Carter up for us and it didn't work. Who? Well, that's Big Casino. The Jim, don't turn here. Huh? That list ought to be ready now. Let's go back to headquarters. Okay. You seen any part of it? Uh Uh-huh. Out of the first 50 names, there were seven ex-inmates not back in jail, dead, or moved out of town. Well, maybe we won't have too many to question. Well, if the others call down the same way, there'll be maybe 30 or 35. I know it'll be ready by morning for sure. Yeah, well, it's too late to start contacting people tonight. Let's meet for breakfast and get on it then. How is he? Well, he's conscious again. Oh, good. For a while I was scared. About what? That you might have killed him. Oh, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. I was only thinking about the police. Is it safe to leave him alone in there? I got him tied up. Well, I... I better start packing, huh? What for? Aren't we getting out of here? I think we better talk about that. What do you mean? Well, taking care of Jimmy doesn't mean the cops have stopped looking for me. That's why you can't stay here. That's right. But I better make my move alone. And leave me here? I'm afraid so. Look, I just saved you from walking into that trap. Yeah, I know. I can't stay here. Honey, I'll be moving fast, hitching rides, freight cars. Yeah, you have to go that way? I gotta go that way. I got no dough. Is that the reason you're not taking me? That's a good reason, ain't it? I got a better one for me going along. Hmm? Like what? Five thousand dollars. What are you talking about? I can get five thousand dollars. Does that change your mind? Where would you get five thousand? From Jimmy's account. Is it a joint account? No, checking. Yeah, he'd have to sign a check. That's right. I think you could persuade him to do it. The following morning, Detective Hopkins had a list ready. It contained 34 names. 
These were ex-inmates of the prison from which Roy Carter had escaped. Ex-inmates who still lived in that city. Now a further breakdown on the 34 names was done. They were divided into those living on the north side and those on the south. Detective Hopkins and Agent Taylor each took half the city as their assignments and started the door-to-door search for Roy Carter. Car nine to car one. Come in, Dick. Jim, how you doing? No good so far. I've got five more people to check. Three more for me. Where are you? North Watkins Avenue. You know, if this list doesn't work, we'd better give the story to the papers. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Huh? I'm at my next interview. Oh, okay. So long. Yes, Dick. Hang on, Jim. Headquarters has something for us. I'll call you back. Right. Hey, mister, get the ball? No, sure, son. Here you are. Thanks. Nice catch. Jim, headquarters just got word that one of the men on our list moved from his old address to 31 Market Street. Who's that? Okay, Dick, I'll meet you. Here you are, honey. You sign it? Like a little man. What time does his bank open? Nine o'clock. You better be getting over there. It's almost that now. Don't you think I better wait a while? What for? Oh, Pretty big check. If I'm their first customer, they might get suspicious. They know you're there? Yeah. I wouldn't worry. Does uh, does Jimmy have a gun? Yeah. Where is it? Out in the shop, under the cash register. You better get it for me before you go. Okay. Annie? Just a minute. Come here. Well, you asked me to get the gun. Back door. Who uses it? Milkman, delivery boys, lots of people. Give me the gun. Roy, you're not gonna... I just want the gun. You answer the door. But why should... If it's for Jimmy, just say he isn't home. Go on. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. James Warren. I'm sorry, he's out. May I ask your name? I'm Mrs. Warren. Oh, when do you expect your husband? Um, Later. Maybe six, seven o'clock. I never know for sure. Do you know where I can reach him? No. He was sick and he went to the doctor. What do you want to see him about? I'm from the police. Oh. I wanted to ask your husband about a man named Carter. Roy Carter. Who's he? Someone your husband used to know. Oh. You say you're not sure what time he's coming home? I'm never sure. Would you mind if I came in and waited? Well, I... No, uh, come on in. And don't reach for anything. All right, Carter. Annie, close the door. Close it. Sorry, we have to meet this way. Roy, what'd you do that for? He didn't come here by accident. He knew something. Go cash the check. And when you get back, we'll go. Okay. Yeah, but we're closed. There's another record store on White Street around the corner. I'm a special agent of the FBI. The FBI? That's right, ma'am. Here are my credentials. What do you want? I'd like to see Mr. Warren. He's not here. 
A man from the police came a little while ago. They went away together. Oh, how long ago was that? About 15 minutes, maybe 20, I don't know. I see. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Roy! Roy! What's the matter? An FBI man was here. Where? In front of the store. I want to see Jimmy. Is he gone? Yeah. I got rid of him. Where's the money? In my purse. Roy, let's go. All right, this way. Why through the back? Just in case that FBI man is waiting out front. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Warren. Uh, Roy, it's the Don't FBI. move, Carter. Let him go. Drop the gun. Come on, drop it. All right, Carter. Now turn around while I put on these handcuffs. Roy Carter was convicted in state court for murder and sentenced to life. Mrs. Warren was convicted for harboring a federal fugitive and sentenced to a federal prison. After the arrest of Roy Carter and Mrs. Warren, Special Agent Taylor released Detective Hopkins and Jimmy Warren. He had returned to the record shop after leaving because he found evidence that Mrs. Warren's story wasn't true. Her husband couldn't have left with Detective Hopkins because the detective's car was parked a few doors down the street. And so not only was an escaped killer captured, but Jimmy Warren was able to do what so many other ex-convicts are doing today, trying to live their lives as decent human beings. Even more prisoners can be rehabilitated if you, the public, will help. The reward will be worth your effort, because every ex-prisoner who rejoins society and lives as an honest member of the community is another vital cog in our defense effort, our defense of democracy. Now, just two things to remember about the Equitable's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. First, it shows you exactly what monthly income your family would require if the breadwinner should die unexpectedly. Second, this pictorial chart doesn't cost you one cent. Ask your Equitable Society representative for a free copy or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, counterfeiting. Its title, The Flying Felon. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Whitfield Connor, Georgia Ellis, Paul Richards, and Carlton Young. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Flying Felon on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood.